So we took the we took the decision together in the Arctic Council among the like-minded members to put a temporary pause on meetings of the council uh, and its subsidiary bo bodies, and and to pause the work. And um, I will tell you, there's no joy in in taking that decision. There's there's obviously no joy in in any of this. Um, but it was a it was a very easy consensus uh, among the like-minded members of the Arctic Council on on the critical need uh, for for a pause. And I'd like to make a, just a few points about about what that means and what some of our key considerations are as we as we look ahead. Um, first, uh, the words uh, pause temporarily were chosen very deliberately. Uh, this was not a this is not a withdrawal from the Arctic Council. It's it's not a uh, announcement that we're trying to reconstitute uh, the Arctic Council, the membership. Um, it's it's simply a pause uh, in in light of of the horrific events and and Russia's egregious, unprovoked, completely unnecessary war of choice uh, against Ukraine. Uh, we don't know how long the pause will last. I think part of the logic here for simply pausing is that we are in a uh, situation that is extremely fluid and none of us can predict um, what the situation with Russia in Ukraine um, elsewhere in Europe will look like a week from now, a month from now. It's highly unpredictable. And so we need this pause and we need the ability to um, act flexibly uh, in the days and the weeks ahead. And because the international situation is unpredictable, I, I think that um, there will be many, many important questions raised uh, today in this discussion. A lot of them will be quite difficult to, uh, to provide answers uh, for, I think. Um, but another point I wanna make is we are as committed today as we have ever been to the Arctic Council as a forum. And so with all the changes that we have seen over the last couple of weeks, one thing that has not changed is our commitment to the council as the premier forum uh, for the Arctic region, as a circumpolar uh, forum. Um, and so as we move forward, we will always have at the front of our minds uh, the question of how do we prevent damage to the council? How do we make sure that we sustain the Arctic Council um, as that effective forum and make sure that it can continue to do its great work for the next 25 years? I can tell you also, we are very mindful of the impact of all this on the indigenous communities who participate uh, in the Arctic Council as permanent participants and all of the communities, including in Russia. And um, the value of the council to them and the value of the links that exist. And so um, we will be mindful of the interests of the communities as we move forward. And then finally, um, I would just want to say that you know, we have been, as I, as I said, lockstep with our like-minded partners in the council, those who are absolutely committed to the principles um, under international law, territorial sovereignty, integrity. And um, we've been lockstep, we'll continue to be. We are consulting closely with our fellow Arctic Council members as we speak, um, and we will find our way through this uh, together.